Hi, um, my name is Adrienne Galley, and uh, I'm here with Omar al Akkad, who is a climate writer, a fiction writer, and he's also a journalist. Hi, Omar. It's great to see you. Likewise. Thanks so much for having me. So, Omar, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, really one big question, which is what can the contemporary novel do or what it, what are people doing with the novel to um, engage climate? When we talk about climate fiction, which I think is a term that that over time will will sort of go away because I don't think of love fiction or memory fiction. I think of these things as sort of integral to the work of literature. And we're in this moment right now where it's impossible really to write about being human without in some way confronting what we've done to this planet. So right now we talk about this idea of, you know, climate fiction as a genre, but I think that's going to go away in time because I think the climate is going to become an integral part of writing about the human experience. But in so much as that genre exists, I think it does two things. The first is that it functions as a mode of talking about what might happen what will happen if we do nothing. And we know from previous experience that this works in getting people to think about an issue. Now, when you think about the Cold War and the possibility of nuclear warfare and the very real possibility that we could wipe each other out, we could wipe ourselves out as a species, you start to think about what books like Alas Babylon did, what movies like Threads did in showing the sort of extrapolation of what would happen if we did nothing, what would happen if we went down the wrong road. And these things change minds. They change minds of individual readers and viewers, and they change minds of world leaders. So we know that fiction can do this. And if it can do it for something as horrific as nuclear warfare, it can do it for something like climate change. The other thing that I think fiction does very, very well is assess uncertainty. There are very few spaces in which to be fully comfortable with uncertainty as fiction. Um, you know, I live in, in sort of the woods just south of Portland, Oregon, and I've seen all kinds of data on what climate change is doing to wildfires, what climate change is doing to the length and severity of the fire seasons. I still don't know when or if my house will burn down. Uh, I don't know that day exactly, and I never will know it until it comes. A few years ago, we were sitting in the living room just behind me here with all our air purifiers going, and we couldn't see the edge of the backyard because of all the smoke, and we were waiting for the fire to jump the river, and if it did, we would have to get out of there. All our bags were packed. To live in that state of deep uncertainty is a terrifying thing, but I think what novels do is they deal in questions. They deal in uncertainty. Novels don't usually provide answers. That's not what the literary form is meant to do. And so when you talk about climate change and what the world's gonna look like 10, 20, 30 years from now, there's an element of deep, deep uncertainty there. And in reading fiction, in going to that place, I think there's an element of being on a level playing field with, with questions and being able to just sit with them. That is an invaluable thing for the moment that we're in right now. So those are the two things that I think fiction brings to the table. It allows us to extrapolate and look at what the world might be, what it could be, what we might still do to change it. And then it also allows us to sit with questions and not feel the need for specific detailed answers, to simply think about a thing about which we are unsure. Thank you so much. That is going to give our readers um, a lot to think about. And uh, I really appreciate that you are joining the Humanitarian Book Club. And I really look forward to the conversation we're going to have with you um, and Bruce Holsinger and other humanitarian experts on the displacements. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.